Hi, welcome back to Tango YouTube channel. Some of you might remember the video I did back in March, which I called Can You Guess the Firmware? And I did three flights one with Kiss, one with Race Flight, and one with Beta Flight. And the whole purpose with the video was to see that can you, by the footage, determine which firmware is being used? Because back then it was a lot of talk about that this firmware is smoother than that, and this one is more locked in, and this one is handling ProPosh better. And my conclusion is that I got about 80, 90 comments, something on the video, and everyone was guessing, and very few was actually right and could say that had all three rights, correct ones. So throughout 2017, I've been flying Race Flight, I've been flying Beta Flight, I've been flying Kiss, and today I'm gonna summarize and let you know what I think of the three different firmwares. So let's have a look at a few flights and see what they can bring. I've been using Beta Flight since I think it was back in February when version 3.1.3 came out. And I remember that since I was a race flight guy all last year, I remember that man, they have come really far because it flies really good since then. And, and all the improvements they have done in the upcoming versions of this, now they are 3.2.1 with the dynamic filtering, it's still really, really good. And what I like about Beta Flight is that if I build 50 quads, I will get 50 quads to work really good. There's ne never any real issues, and the default PIDs work on basically all the builds you can come up with, all the setups. So it's really convenient that it's stable. I know the name is Beta Flight, but it's, it's super stable. It always works. So if you're a pilot that you're not that interested in tuning you don't want to fiddle with the filters to get it a hundred percent perfect then beta flight is a perfect choice for you and something that I really like about beta flight is the OSD feature the OSD is so amazing with their milliampere consumption you got the RSSI you got a different timers and you're able to customize it as, as you want it and if you combine it with for example, the, the this flight controller, it's so convenient and even their own flight controller is really, really good. So, what can be improved with Beta Flight? I think their GUI could be a little bit better. It's been basically looking the same for the past two years, so there could be some improvements done. And when it comes to flight characteristics, I think Beta Flight is 99% perfect. But I'm always struggling to find the last percent of smoothness. The last percent of getting the maneuvers to look like they are combined with each other, like they go in a, like a flow, you know, like, a, like in a line that's connected. So, Beta Flight is super good nowadays, and I would recommend it to anyone that just, just want to fly and make it work. Race flight then. Last year I was all about race flight because I thought that back then it was a major advantage to go with race flight, especially if you were racing. So back in February or March when they released the RF1 with the revolt boards, I was so eager to get it going, but I had a lot of issues. Sometimes I got hot motors, sometimes it just flew a lot of funky like like slippery, and sometimes it failed during the setup process. So I took a step back and thought that, okay, I will let this firmware mature a little bit. So I was on beta flight for the entire summer, but a few weeks ago I decided, yeah, let's give race flight a shot again. And I tried version 324 and I was, wow, it was so easy. It, it, it just worked and I uh, used it on two or three quads something and all of them just flew great on default PIDs and I didn't have to do a lot of tuning to get it to fly as I wanted. So my conclusion with Race Flight is that the GUI they are using is by far the best I've seen in this industry because they got a step by step which is so easy that even my grandmother would be, she could do a setup of a quad. It's so easy and that's the direction our sport needs. So a super simplified GUI is perfect. Two thumbs up for race flight on that. And 
when it comes to the actually flight characteristics I think that it's the it's so smooth it's fluid and it makes my flying look better than it actually is so the hardware yeah it's a little bit pricey for the flight controller but they do have a warranty with a I think they have a 50% off for a replacement program which is super good and from now on I would really go with race flight because it just works and it's fluid and the only thing I had a bit of issues with is that I couldn't really find my rates to get them as I wanted but now I'm using KISS rates and it's uh, perfect it, the rates are exactly as I wanted so race flight I will go towards race flight on most of my quads from now on and I'm super happy with it, it it's my preferred firmware for sure two thumbs up from me When it comes to KISS, I was a big fan of KISS for freestyle flying in the beginning of the year. I think the stick feel KISS provides is excellent, it's super, it really feels good on the sticks. I feel confident when I fly my KISS rigs, but I had a lot of issues with inconsistency. I can have a quad that works perfectly on the Thursday, but when I bring it out on the Saturday, without crashing it or anything, it just flew like crap. Then I put it back home and I brought it out on the next week and it flew. It was perfect again. So, and I also had a lot of these KISS 24 ESCs just randomly die on me. The right back one. Don't know why, several different quads is always the right back one. Even my friend Johan has the same issue with the right back ESCs suddenly just go dead. So, even though I really like the way KISS, the, the way KISS flies, I gave up on it because it was too much work, too much just troubleshooting, trying to get it work as it should. So today I don't use KISS. Maybe I'll try it again in the future when they have some new firmware. It's about to be released. So no more KISS. Sorry for that.